Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the new Reaper WRB version 2. It's about to come out. So if you don't know, Reaper WRB is Reaper Web Remote Builder, and it's a web app that I've been working on with Michael Clear. And what it does is provide a simple way for you to create web remotes to control Reaper remotely from a tablet or from a phone. You don't need to know any HTML or JavaScript or anything like that. You can, um, if you know how to save a toolbar or to copy the uh, command ID inside of Reaper, for an action, then you can uh, use Reaper WRB. So after installation, it looks like this. I'm running inside of Firefox on Mac. It will also work with uh, Safari and, and Chrome. Um, so we, we recommend Firefox and Chrome for this. So if your screen is a big enough size, you have access to the editor. I can't go through every single detail about this new update in this video. Um, there's going to be a full series of tutorials along with the purchase of the product. So um, stay tuned for that. That will be available very soon. We're just going to look at what's new, essentially. You already saw this kind of home page. Uh, this is where you'll find the button for the editor, the default template, um, and then any of the saved web remotes that you have uh, will be listed here as long as they're saved in the database format or saved in the local browser. So there's actually three different ways to save now, and I think we'll probably get into that a little bit later. But first of all, let's go into the editor. We have a help screen that's available at any time um, on any of the editing pages, and so you can toggle that on and off. And uh, Michael wrote all of this out for us. Um, we can click on blank to create a just an empty uh, web remote and it'll start off with naming the tab. So this could be transport. Um, we can change the text color, different uh, shades from white to black, and we can also change the background color of that button in various different ways. Different uh, color palette options makes it really simple to use. Once we have a tab named, we can add in an item, and on the right side, it asks you whether you want an action, a spacer, the transport bar, position bar, markers, or regions. So let's put in the transport bar. And so this is one module with five different buttons. We've got stop, play, pause, record, and uh, setting loop playback. Again, we can change these colors, and we can change the background color we can make this larger if we want as well. So that's new, changing the sizes. We can go on to another item or we can go on to another row, change this down to like seven, put in item, action. And here's the new main action editor. We can get an action from Reaper. Um, the built-in or the, the default um, key commands are kind of loaded in here so you can search. One simple one that I like to put in here is undo. So edit undo, and that's going to go in there. And we'll just change this label to just undo. We'll give it a color like, let's see, red, I guess. And we also have a bunch of different icons here. And a lot of these icons were made by myself and Michael. Um, al along with some others that were curated. I'm not sure if we have an undo one specifically, um, but a couple different arrows are available there. Um, but there's a lot of different ones. So like there's one for like a graphic EQ, um, cassette tape, different things like uh, trimming items and... Um, different drum folders and percussion track folders and things like that. So let's go back to undo and put in that arrow. If we click on the connect button up at the top, we can actually start that working right away. So I can get play and Reaper's already started playing. I can pause, I can stop, toggle loop recording. So as long as this connect button is 
enabled that sends right from the editor. You don't uh, previously you had to go into a test mode, um, which made all the buttons active. And once this is saved, it's available on uh, your tablet or your phone. So just keep it in mind that this is just the editor. This is setting it up in a simple way. Uh, doing it on the computer is going to be much easier than doing it on the tablet. So you know, there's a lot of things we can do with this. Uh, let's let's go make a new row, add in an item. And just move a little bit quicker here. Let's put in the position bar. Uh, let's put in a, a markers bar. So with the marker bar, we can um, navigate through markers. I'm not sure if I have many in this project, um, but if they if the markers are actually named, um, uh, you can see them here. Marker one and marker two are named. And the same goes for regions. I don't have any regions in this project, but um, you know, the same thing applies. Let's just put in a couple kind of empty buttons here just so I can show you the bulk editing. So bulk editing, I can click on three of these and I can uh, change the text color and change the button background color. And then we can exit out of bulk editing. So if I wanted to save this, I'd click on the Save button, and we get three different options here. We can save it to the browser, which just keeps it locally saved within the browser session. This was added so that you can um, edit your web remotes right from an iPad and save it. And, um, and you, know, you don't have to go back and forth to the computer quite as often if you just want to make like one little change. We also have HTML, which is kind of the older way where uh, you would save your web remote as an HTML file, and then you would direct your remote device to that remote file. Uh, so you can still do that if you want. Um, we like the the new option, the database option. You save it as a JavaScript file, and then all of your web remotes um, get updated with that. So this would be like a test or something like that. So I'm going to click on the DB button. It'll ask me to save, so I'll go to that folder where the uh, webremote.js file is saved. That's in the Reaper WW root folder. This will all be in the tutorials, so don't worry about uh, getting all these details right now. So I'm going to hit Save and Replace. I'm going to hit Home. And now here's that new web remote test. So let's go over to the web remote running on a cheap Samsung tablet. Um, we've got Buttons like zoom out project, unsolo all tracks, unmute all tracks, unarm all tracks, toggle pre roll on record and toggle pre roll on play, toggle the metronome. We can hit play and play the project. Um, the we've got a transport position bar which shows, you know, what uh, time display or what time position you're on, and we can tap this to change between um, seconds, beats, and an auto. And when it's on auto, it's gonna be like timecode. Um, if the project is actually on a timecode grid, which looks like that, and now the remote switched to timecode. We have marker navigation, um, region navigation, inserting a new marker, inserting a new region, different transport uh, record modes, as well as um, showing the monitor effects chain. These are all stock Reaper functions. Um, there's no custom actions here. There's no scripts. Uh, this is just a jumping off point. You can always edit and make your own um, web remotes. We want you to make your own web remotes. We want to see what you guys um, can do with it. And going back to the default template, we have a second page for automation. And so these are just some of like our favorite actions for automation. Setting the track to read, setting the track to touch, setting it to latch, latch preview, or back to trim read. Um, we can show the last touched parameter. Um, let's see, let's go to protoverb and touch the decay knob, and then I touch this, and now I've got that. Um, I can press a button on the tablet, which shows me that track um, parameter envelope lane. Um, we do things like inserting an automation item. We'll just make in a time selection, make sure that's 
selected there and hit that and a new automation item was added. If we're in latch preview mode, these right to start, right to time selection, right to end actions are really helpful. I'm gonna go back home on the tablet and go to my mixer layout. And so this is one that I've set up with some of my favorite custom actions and scripts um, that I would use for mixing. So I've got things like copying the effects chain, pasting the effects chain, showing the monitor window as a toggle, showing the routing window. I can copy the routing and paste the routing to different tracks. I can show the track manager. I can show the snapshots window. And that went over to my second monitor, but it's there. Um, I can show all tracks named bus. My drum tracks, my percussion tracks, my bass, my guitars, keys, vocals, effects folder. Uh, this project isn't really set up uh, to use that with my template. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly a lot better. I can select this, I can hit float effects, and there's my, my um, effects shown there just for the selected track, and then I can close all the effects. And so these give me a lot of a lot more control and a lot more uh, functions for Reaper when my keyboard is already maxed out with keyboard shortcuts. And, you know, toolbars get kind of cluttered at times. I have a second tab here just with transport controls. So, um, so yeah, I can use the mouse a lot less, or I can use the mouse just for certain things and use these buttons um, to kind of keep my eyes in the same sort of area. And so that's it for uh, what's new in this Reaper WRB version two app. It's going to be available very soon and there will be a full kind of course about all the things you can do in it uh, along with the purchase price. Um, Reaper WRB version one is going away, but uh, anyone that has previously bought it will still have access to it and all your web remotes will still continue to work. The update is going to be free for existing users. So um, I think uh, everyone is going to be really happy with this. So this will be available very soon. Please keep watching reaperblog.net uh, for when this is available. And um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. See ya.